should. I feel like uh, I feel kind of crazy tonight. I feel wild. Um, some kind of bourbon. The cheap, cheap bourbon. Uh, whatever. I don't want you to spend too much money. Very thrifty when it comes to drinking. <laughs> cheap as shit. It all tastes the same to me. Um, all right, check it out. I want to tell you. All right, I got a story for you. That uh, this is this is kind of what I've been working on the last couple of years. I've been like collecting stories. You know, I love uh, just hearing people's. You know, if you got a good story, if you got one here tonight, you know, come uh, take me aside and tell me your story. And uh, so I've been, uh, yeah, inviting people to tell me their stories, and, uh, and then I record them, like an interview, and then I, and then I write them a song. You know. Called a life in song with Clemson. It's like a podcast. Oh man, thanks so much. Very kind. Um, so uh, one of the stories I got, I gotta tell you this story because it's gonna just. I know it's just Monday night. You know what I'm saying? You're in Cleveland. It's raining. You're cold. You're frightened. <laughs> you're angry, so you're probably gonna win. So you know, it's all right. I hate the Yankees. Fuck the Yankees, man. Yeah. Mets, man. Mets. Uh, no, I don't even give a fuck about sports. I don't even know. Uh, I told Jill that oh, there's like a big game tonight. It might, you know, people might not come out. She was like, football? I don't even know a sport. Um, the Bears. Anyway, but, all right, I got to tell you this story. This is going to blow your mind. Alright, so this was told to me by my uh, my Spanish friend, Ruben. I can vouch for this guy. He's, he's a good guy. He wouldn't just make this story up. <laughs> this is what he told me. Alright, so check it out. Ruben, uh, he used to drive me around. I used to go play in Spain over the years, and he would drive, uh, drive me around. So we, uh, you know, get to talking. He told me this story. Ruben is uh, in like his mid-30s. And he likes to travel. You know, he works for a while, saves up his money, and then him and his girlfriend Marta, they go and uh, travel. <laughs> oh, you're so good. Thank you. Oh man, that's gonna make all the difference. <laughs> Thanks, really, I, can I just tell you how grateful I am that you're here? Thank you so much. Uh, I can't believe I keep saying it that you came out on a Monday night in the rain. It's really, it's unbelievable, honestly. You know, it gives me a faith in you. Maybe, there's, maybe you got something going on back at home, you know what I'm saying? Some kind of trouble back home. You seem to get out of the house. You know, that's, what, that's probably what's going on. It's just oh, it's, it's, you know, you have a bunch of requests there. Uh, fruit salad stains, like, you're insane. Why would you ask them? <laughs> that is like too deep, man. That is beyond deep cut. <laughs> Anyway, so whatever trouble you got going on at home, I hope, I hope it's okay. I hope it's not too bad. I hope you can find some, some comfort here. Anyway, tell you Ruben's story. <laughs> okay, get ready. You ready for it? Here it goes. Ruben, uh, so he's in India, right? They travel, you know, they save up money, and then they go live in all kinds of strange countries. So they're in uh, India, and they're up in the Himalayas, him and Marta. And this other couple from Spain, and they're, you know, they have no kids, I should mention. Him and Marta, they can't have kids. Marta can't uh, have kids. So that helps uh, if you want to travel the world. So they're up in the, in the mountains there. They're staying in this, they found these like little cabins, you know, and it's beautiful and it's like this amazing spot. And, uh, so they're just, uh, they're hanging out there. They notice the cabin next to theirs. There's always a bunch of people milling around, a lot of couples, people kind of coming in and out, you know, it's a, they're, uh, you know, what's going on? Something's going on over there. So finally they, uh, they meet the guy who's staying in this cabin. He, uh, he comes over to them and they're just kind of hanging out in the courtyard there and uh, introduces himself. His name is Carlos and he's from Puerto Rico. He's a Puerto Rican and, uh, and he tells them that he's What's going on is uh, he's healing. He's a healer. 
And so he's there just healing the local people, helping them, you know, especially uh, couples, like infertile couples. That's kind of his specialty. And, uh, and he tells them also that he was from Puerto Rico, but the reason he had to leave, he couldn't stay in Puerto Rico anymore, because three of his ex-wives uh, tried to poison him. So it wasn't safe for him to stay in Puerto Rico. And, uh, and then also he just throws in there that he uh, at one time played trumpet in Ricky Martin's band. <laughs> so this car looks right. And there he is healing people in uh, up in the Himalayas there in India. Right. Like, all right. Yeah, this is uh, again, this is a true story. All right. And I uh, so just stay with. So they're like, wow, that's uh, interesting, you know. And so they're getting to know each other. They're hanging out, and so they're with this other couple. And the woman uh, of this couple mentions, you know, she'd been feeling kind of sick for the last week or so, you know, nauseous, headaches, just not sure what's going on, and she so sort of offhandedly mentions this to Carlos, Carlos, he says, all right, tell you what, why don't you guys come, come to the, uh, you know, come to my uh, little cabin there, and, uh, you know, I'll see if I can help you. So all four of them go in there, you know, later that day, and uh, this is what happens. <laughs> so first the girl, uh, who was, you know, not feeling well, he has her, like, sitting in a chair, and he stands over her, and he just starts moving his hands around her body without touching, you know, just a few inches away from her body. And he does this for about a minute or so, and then she turns pale, just white, and starts gagging, and he grabs a bowl, he puts it, you know, right in front of her, and she, she coughs up what, this is how Ruben described it. He goes, Eve, she coughs. Something come out of her body I've never seen come from a human body. I look in the bowl, it's just full of uh, like a green and brown hair. So she coughs up a hairball and, uh, and then lets out a big sigh and that feels good. She's like, Phew, you know, like, wow, thanks, you know, and that, that did it, you know, whatever, whatever she was uh, dealing with for the past week. It's, it's been, and so they're all kind of like, what the fuck, you know? Oh, but he said that when it happened too, right when she like coughed it up, he felt this like blast of energy, like hit his face, and almost knocked him down. So he just. So then uh, the guy goes, and he's uh, you know same thing, moves his hands around, and uh, nothing's wrong with him. He's good to go. And Reuben, it's Reuben's turn, and he does the same thing. to Reuben moves his hands around, and he goes, oh yeah, he tells him uh, your lungs. Your lungs seem a little dirty. Uh, you know, you've been smoking. You've been smoking a lot. He's like, yeah, I've been smoking a lot. He's like, all right, here. And he mixes a little potion for him. He takes some water, puts some drops in there. Like, Drink this. Um, you know, for the next couple days, and uh, you'll be fine. You can smoke all you want. <laughs> He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> and then Marta. Okay, so that's Marta's turn. All right, so Marta he has her lay down, and he starts moving his hands around. He stops, you know, hovers above her stomach a little bit, and, uh, and he stops her and he goes, hmm, I, I feel something here, Marta, you know? And she's about to tell him, well, yeah, you see, I have, it's called endometriosis, I think, something, right? She has got that, she's got some other thing, too, a couple things wrong with her, you know, ovaries, she can't have kids. She's about to explain this to him, and he goes, uh, shh, 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 shh. you don't have to tell me, Marta, I know, I know what it is. And he says, uh, I can I can, uh, yes, I can, fix it, I can heal you, if you want me to, uh, but it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot, and uh, but it won't take very long. Be quick, be very painful, but very quick. She goes, all right, sure, you know, she agrees. That's how Reuben, uh, Reuben tells him. He take his finger, just one finger, and, uh, you know, up until now he hadn't touched anybody, he just moved his hands around. But this time he said, take his finger and he push it into Marta's stomach. Push it, push it very hard. Marta, you can see Marta is in a lot of pain. You know, ah, Marta's like, ah. And then I look in and I see blood. Blood coming from her stomach, lots of blood. And, you know, Ruben's like freaking out. And then I see him take a, a, some cotton and he wipe the blood, he wipe the blood, and push him, push him, and then wipe him, wipe him. And then 
And then he lift his finger, move his finger away. Oh. Marta lets out a big sigh. He wipes up the, the blood. And he goes, I look at this at Marta's stomach, there's nothing. There's no cut. There's no nothing. And he turns to her, Carlos, and he says, Okay, <laughs> you're you're healed. You're good to go. So, uh, you know, they get up, they kind of stumble out of the cabin, like kind of in a, in a haze, like what just happened? You know, they're not even sure how to make sense of this whole thing. You know, I saw the blood, but then there's nothing, whatever. They're just talking about it, they're kind of perplexed. So finally, you know, they can't, uh, the next day, you know, they March is like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta know. So she goes back to Carlos and, uh, you know, like knocks on the door and, and just like, can I talk to you, please? You know, I, I, I just don't understand what, what, what just happened. So uh, Carlos, you know, says, all right. So she goes into his cabin and she's in there for, you know, like a little while and they're sort of waiting for her. And she finally comes out and she, uh, and she's like, you know, kind of wiping like a tear away and she seems really kind of shaken up. And, and you know, they ask her, well, what, what happened? What, what did he say? And, and she's like, oh, I'd rather, she's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And she's like, he just said some very harsh, very harsh things to me. I'm like, what? You don't tell us. She goes, okay, so this is what happened. She goes in there and she goes, uh, yeah, you know, can you just, uh, you know, I want to understand what, 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 what happened? What, you know, what did you do? How does that work? Whatever. And he goes, oh, he goes, says to her, okay, Marta, do you want to know the truth? You know, or do you want me to, to tell you like the nice, you know, soft uh, version, or do you want the real truth? And she's like, yeah, I want the real truth. You know? And he goes, because I can open the book of Marta. You know, he's being kind of intense. I can open the book of Marta. I can read from it, and you will not like what I what I have to say. And I will read it in front of your friends, and they will, you know, they will hate you. And she's like, what are you talking about? He's like, okay, Marta, let me be clear. Woman is the root of all evil in the world. Because you, Marta, are the root of all evil in the world. And those children, you knew she was a teacher, right? Those children you teach, all you do is teach the boys how to be gay and the girls to be whores. That's what he says to her. So she's upset. <laughs> but naturally. So she tells this to uh, Ruben, and uh, so they go back, kind of confront Carlos, knock on the door, he lets him in. They're like, you know, what are you doing? Why would you say that to Marta? She's really upset. And he goes, listen, guys, I told it to her because it's the truth. He's like, you don't see it because you are in love. And that is the power that, <laughs> that the women have to blind us. And he goes, well, well, then why are you here healing these women if you think they're the root of all evil, Carlos, you know? And he goes, because I am on the side of the light, and God told me to. That's what he said. <laughs> so then the next day, they, uh, they leave. <laughs> they're, like, they're kind of freaked out by Carlos and everything that's, uh, that he said, so they decide to go find a different place to stay. So they, uh, yeah, they get on with their trip in uh, India. They, they spend another couple months there. And, you know, they're just trying to, like, occasionally it comes up. And they go, ah, you know, that was crazy. That guy was fucking crazy, you know, whatever. They don't think too much about it. They're back in Spain, you know, back to their, back to their life there in Spain. And sure enough, Ruben gets the call, you know, he's on tour. He gets the call. It's Marta. Guess what? He's pregnant. <laughs> Very unimpressed. <laughs> Miraculous. Right? She, yeah, I went to the gynecologist and, and he was like, I can't explain it. Like those two things you had that we couldn't cure are completely as if you never even had them. That's what happened. He, she was healed miraculously. Miraculous healing is real. <laughs> Tell the story, and everyone's like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> Just expect more of it. That's cool. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Miraculous feeling is real here in uh, Cleveland on a Monday night. Ruben.
Ruben wouldn't make this shit up, right? He's a, he's a, I can vouch for him. This is a true story. She goes, all right. So she tells him, yeah, yeah guess what? I'm pregnant. But it's not with your baby. <laughs> It's with Sergio. It was Sergio's baby. It was his best friend. He got pregnant. Who she was uh, secretly in love with for the last few years. <laughs> so yeah. That's the true story. Uh, so miraculous healing is real. That's good to know. Uh, you just gotta go out. You gotta find Carlos. I don't know where to Fly out to the Himalayas there. And uh, so miraculous healing is real, but it still hurts like hell. That's uh, that's the lesson that we've learned here. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, this was Ruben's favorite song, so I like to dedicate it to him right now. It goes like this. Well, Anita, can't you see? We are meant to be. And nothing. Never perfect in this life. We all feel as though a drift. Sure could you use a lift. Tell me why. Should it be any different? Just for you. Just all your shine 
it up. Just fill your mouth with sour wine. Well, hungry love, it needs always to consume. But then I saw your eyes begin. Place where I know I, I don't belong. I don't belong. I need a ID. Yeah, no one. Will ever, ever love you more? Oh, I need you. I need you. Let's turn the after back into the fall. Turn the after back into 